Hello everyone and welcome to Daily Bread. Gabby, and today I'm going to be reading Bible verses that you can meditate on if you are battling any addiction. And I'm going to read 10 Bible verses, and the first time that I read through them, slowly and repetitively, I will also have layered trigger sounds. And the second Before we get to the Bible verses, I wanted to talk about my own personal experience with addiction. My phone. I recently put out a community post a couple weeks ago talking about the problem that I have with my phone and specifically how I have decided to take steps to combat this phone addiction. For me personally, it was the um, apps like YouTube and Instagram, and specifically the short form content on those platforms that really got me hooked and made me waste so, so much precious time. I was reading through the comments on that post, I actually wasn't at all surprised that many of you, many of you, struggle with the exact same thing. And I felt it necessary to address this particular addiction because I believe that it is unhealthy for anyone, Christian, non-Christian, it's not good to be looking at our phones for hours and hours on end, being unproductive. But it is especially harmful if you are a Christian desiring, desiring to draw closer to God. This past Sunday, my pastor actually said something in his sermon that really struck a chord with me and it was something that I already knew but the way that he phrased it stuck out to me he said laziness is profoundly ungodly laziness is profoundly ungodly for me, I knew this already, but I was able to directly link it to my phone addiction, and specifically my type of phone addiction. You might use your phone for several hours, but you're actually doing work on it, but for my type, it was definitely causing me to be slothful and lazy. So. If you too are struggling with it, you should ask yourself, am I controlling my phone or is my phone controlling me? And another one you can ask is, is my phone usage, usage pushing me and inspiring me to draw closer to God? Is it enhancing my knowledge, my creativity? Those are a few questions I had to ask myself, and as I'm sure it is for a lot of you, the answer is no. So I had to do a lot of introspection and think about the course that my life was headed on if I were to continue being on my phone that much, and it didn't look good. I've always been one to criticize parents who have iPad babies and I, I 
had it in my heart to, to not do that whenever I had kids to not just put them in front of an iPad and to avoid giving them a smartphone for as long as possible but I thought about my own habits and how hypocritical it would be for me for my child to see me scrolling and scrolling and yet they're not allowed to do that it would make no sense so I'm taking it upon myself to get rid of this habit that is not adding any ounce of goodness to my life um, but I know it's hard because the people who design these platforms design them so that you stay on the app for as long as you can and that would be one thing if the content that these platforms pushed out was highly educational and informative but more often than not it is mindless mindless entertainment and it will cause you to start doom scrolling for way longer than you intended to but I just want to encourage you to reflect if this is something that you are struggling with and reflect on your own your own habits and see if this is causing you to become a better person or draw closer to the Lord but now I'm going to read 10 Bible verses that are convicting but yet some of them are comforting and I want you to meditate on them think about them and may they stir your heart to love God more change, whatever your addiction may be. So, let's start with the first Bible verse and the first trigger. And like I said earlier, the second time I read through these, there will be no triggers. So you can go ahead and jump to that. Just look in the timestamps. First Corinthians Chapter 6, verse 12 I have the right to do anything you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. First Corinthians Light. 
let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh.
Titus 2 verses 11 through 14 For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present circumstance. I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things, all things through him who strengthens me. And on
priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest Peter 5 
fast. 
post our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect, every respect, has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne, the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy. this 